Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Busty Asian Beauty, the supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times. And I, someone who only knows this show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 12, Chris Angel is a Douchebag, written by Julie Siege, directed by Robert Singer. Oh, I love women. I know I hated women in 407, but thanks, Julie Siege. I love this episode. I mean, yeah. Okay, I like it the same <laughs> way I liked last episode, but like a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, question. Am I the only one who thought for a second there was going to be old man Yaoi and Supernatural? <laughs> no. These three are literally in a polyamorous gay relationship. Yeah. They are. There, there's something fruity going on there. Especially between Jay and Charlie. Like, what is going on? It literally is so Hannibal Core. Like, I mean... <laughs> He stands himself <laughs> so that the other person will die. And then he says, he gave me a gift and I just threw it to his face, which is something Hannibal literally tells Will. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, that was the whole when point. Did Hannibal, when did Hannibal come out? I, when did Hannibal come out? When? Um, 2013 to 2015. They fucking stole this. They, they stole, stole Chris Angel as a douchebag. Yeah. Brian Fuller, answer to Julie Siege. Yeah. I gave you a gift and you didn't want it. That was a direct <laughs> reference to Chris Angel as a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> it's this this episode is good. It's funny. I mean, and yeah. also like like Ruby is in it for very little. But I actually have but, like some yeah. insights into her character that I want to talk about later when we we start mm-hmm. talking about the episode. Yeah, like what she does here is super interesting, and mm-hmm. oh, let's talk about it later. I don't want to, you know, we should we should give the audience what they want all throughout the episode so they keep on listening. Is that how it works? I don't know. I'm a bad podcaster. <laughs> sure, probably. Okay, so before we begin, Crystal. What did you know about Chris Angel is a douchebag before you watched it? Oh, uh, literally nothing except that Ruby would be in it at some point. Really? You didn't know about the chief? Oh, you told me about the chief. Sorry. Yes, I knew about the chief because you told me. I didn't know what episode the chief was going to be in. I don't remember anything about this episode. Like, absolutely nothing. I knew that Ruby was going to come because of the den sequence, but... Like, prior to that, I just didn't know. I thought it was just going to be a case episode with, like, nothing happening. But I remember so vividly the title of this episode. And I remember also so vividly that this is where the chief comes up. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is, like, the only two things you need from this episode, I guess. It's true. The dance sequence is mostly Ruby and Sam. And, like... Yep. All those stuff, like Sam being like, oh, she saved me, but also Sam not being able to kill demons, and like Ruby being mm-hmm. like, you need to you need to tone up, and Sam being like, I'm not going to do that. And that's where we end mm-hmm. at the dance sequence. We start yeah. with a rather lengthy pre-splash screen thing, mm-hmm. where basically there's a guy... Um, in a bar. They are at Shoe City. I looked up mm-hmm. whether the city in Iowa is like Magic Central. I don't I think don't it know is. About Sioux city. I, I don't really know how to look it up. Because if I look up Shoe City, Iowa, like it doesn't say like, oh, it's Magician Central. But if I look up Shoe huh. City, Iowa, Magic, it just like shows me all the magicians there, and it's like no, 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 I. That's not what I'm looking for. 
So I don't know. Do you know I anything about Iowa? Having a conference. I don't know anything about Iowa besides Sad. that it is the title of a song by Dar Williams that everyone should listen to. We start well. We again we start in Iowa, and you know. We see like outside, and there's like a bunch of people doing magic tricks on the street. Woo! And then we go inside the bar, and there is a guy also doing a magic trick in front of the bartender. And he is old. He is doing like card tricks specifically. And there's a guy just like off the side who is in your typical magician garb. Yeah, and he's he's just party city levels. Yeah, party city city magician garb, and he is heckling this guy basically. Like, the bartender is not even putting on a. Sh- I, no, I mean, Jay. This guy's name is Jay. He's not even putting mm-hmm. on a show. He's just literally showing like tricks to the bartender, and this guy. This asshole's just like, yeah. Why don't you show us another one? And like. At some point, he fumbles, like, the trick, and Vance, the heckler, is like, Yeah, you loser. You know, he's so fucking annoying. Uh Uh-huh. And then, at some point, the bartender goes, Can you just, um, like, stop doing that? Like, leave the old man alone. And then Jay, who is the old man- Which definitely helps him feel better. Was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm an old man. He even does this thing where, like, he reveals the trick, like- the card is in the pocket, and he just keeps going, Check his pocket! Check his pocket! He's so unbearable. We go to a theater. And there is also another young magician. His name is Jeb Dexter. And mm-hmm. he is practicing some tricks where... I think it's his grand entrance. And there's just a couple of people in the audience, because this is a practice. And also, heavy metal is playing. I don't think this is heavy metal. I think this is just metal music. I don't know genres very well. I also don't. I don't know why I made that call. But <laughs> um, <laughs> it is metal music. So, just, you know, and the guy, Jeb, looks... Scene? <laughs> he Was looks like what? a scene kid. He looks like a scene kid, right? Mm-hmm. Well, like, uh, it's shirtless, leather vest, um, sort of spiky hair, and yeah, eyeliner. eyeliner, yeah. They are making him out to be, like, a bit of a, of an asshole, because, yeah. um, like, at some point, he's like, cut all this, you're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to do this, why, why isn't this happening? And there are three magicians watching him. And these are the old men yaoi of this episode. Um, <laughs> so to introduce you to them, it's Vernon, it's uh, Jay, and it's Charlie. And yep. I don't really know how to differentiate them. But basically... Um, Jay's like our main guy. Charlie yeah, is, is our... his bestie who like has definitely explored his body. And Vernon's sort of, like, not very nice. He's okay. I feel like he entered the trouble. Like, Charlie yeah, and like... Jay were together mm-hmm. first. And then they were like, yeah, Vernon. Right, and then too. they saw Vernon across the bar and liked his Yeah. Fight. Yeah, exactly. They're just um, talking about how this Jeb Dexter guy is kind of an asshole. And they're being mean to him because of his, like flashiness like his outfit and his eyeliner and charlie's like yeah. oh it used to be about skill that's not his voice <laughs> <laughs> why did i put yeah, that sure voice? that's your old man voice go for it <laughs> he's going it used to be about skill and jay who is quite defeated about his career and his life it's like God, you guys are pathetic. You're like bitter and old. We are all bitter and old. We are jokes in this industry. Mm. That used to be us, but now it's like whatever. We're just old. We're dying. And then he just goes, I'm gonna do the table of death tonight. And Vernon and Charlie is like, 
you almost died when you last did that. Don't be crazy. And Jay is like, yeah, who give a shit? I just want to just... If I die, at least I go out with a headline. Don't do that to your audience, man. Yeah. Like, don't traumatize like, your audience. You are going to, yeah, you're going to traumatize a good, like, probably five people, given that no one goes to your shows, but still. We go to a now smaller theater than what Jay, what's his name? Jeb Dexter was at earlier. This one is just like, it's just in a restaurant. And Jay is in a tuxedo. He is all dressed up for the With show. like a pink satin shirt under it. Yeah, like magic magician a fun wear. look. Yeah. And he is saying like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, like your typical magician stuff. He lies down on the table of death and Charlie starts to lock the cuffs. At some point, Charlie goes, these are tight. Are you sure you can slip out of them? They start the scene. They, like, close the curtains in front of the table. So it's all shadow. You're just seeing all shadow. Yeah. Which, I mean, I personally just would not believe any of it was real if that was the case. Like, they could be playing a projection. That's true. They start burning the, like thing that will make the blades fall. Yeah. There's like ten, like, bloody swords hanging from the ceiling or whatever. Why are the swords already bloody? Or are they I just red? I don't know. They probably... Yeah, they probably just, like, t- tinted them with red to make them look more menacing. Yeah. Jay is trying to get out, but I don't think it's happening. Mm. This, this scene is so long, but okay. Meanwhile... Um, Vance and this girl he was with earlier, who's his assistant, are le- are leaving the bar that they were at. We go back to Jay. He's struggling. It's not happening. And then the swords fall, and Jay on the table. Uh, and the silhouette looks like he has been stabbed to death. Everyone mm. in the room is gasping. After a moment of silence. The curtains open. Jay is there. And people are like, oh my god, that's so amazing. And then we go back to Vance, the heckler from earlier. And now he mm. is dead. Yep. There are like With ten um, stab wounds. Ten stab wounds on his torso. But like no no like anything on his shirt. Like no tears or anything. Which is fun. Mm-hmm. And it that's when fun. we get our splash screen we cut to a bit later and jeb from earlier is doing card tricks on the street and he's saying that like he's channeling like demon and angel powers or whatever uh meanwhile sam and dean are passing by and dean's like what a douchebag but sam says Hey, that's Jeb Dexter. And Dean goes, I don't even want to know how you know that. And Sam's like, he's famous. Okay, so, I mean, uh, okay, we're agreed that, like, Sam has a bit of a celebrity crush on this guy, right? But, like, (laughs) is it, like, is it, like, a he's an asshole but I sort of find his charm affecting sort of crush? Or is it, like, a I want to make him take my cock so bad so that he can shut the fuck up kind of crush. I don't think he has a crush on this guy. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. He just knows about him, doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Alright, that's okay. Also, do you think it's mean if I say that this guy kind of reminds me of Beat Wench? <laughs> no, I don't think it's mean. It has to. He I don't know what Pete Wentz that vibe. looks like. He has a little bit that vibe. Also, like, I mean, this is a spoiler, but later Charlie reminds me. Okay, I can of, see it. Like, um, Brian Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> huh? When he like, showed up, I was like, "That's Brian Jordan Alvarez," and I just kept wait, like, like the, the entire young time. One? Yeah, the young one, and the entire time wait, when he was young, but I was you, like, you would have a different association with young Charlie. 
Who? He's the actor that plays Lucas in House MD. Who the hell is Lucas? Um, the ex-wife. The private husband. investigator that. Oh. What? No, the private investigator that House hires to spy on Wilson, and then he and Cuddy end up having a baby together. That's crazy. Does that really happen in the show? <laughs> yes. <sighs> You're, I thought, aren't you the House MD fan? Nope. <laughs> I, I okay. plead the fifth. I think that's that's a law in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it applies to overseas, but... Yeah. Anyway, um... So... Basically, the rest of Jeb's act is, like, he pretends that he gets possessed by a demon and that helps him figure out what, like, someone's card is. Um, and Dean's like, man, this sucks. I can't believe people actually believe this. And moreover, like, it's also, like, literally, like, offensive to the demon hunting community <laughs> to <laughs> pretend to be possessed by a demon. Like, bro, Hunter is not an axis of oppression as much as the Winchesters want you to think that. It's so funny to me that he also thinks that, like, people believe in magic tricks. Like, <laughs> no! No, they don't! <laughs> People are impressed by the skill that you exhibit when you do a quote magic trick. That's what people are impressed by. They don't think exactly. it's literally magic. I don't know. This <laughs> so annoying. God, so so annoying. Wait, I mentioned that the Winchester's finale, the main villain is someone who wants to kill all humans because she's mad that hunters wasted all their time protecting humans. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Dean, Dean would be on this woman's side, like, given a few more bad days watching magic tricks. Yeah, so the thing that you said about skill is what Sam says. He's like, okay, like, I mean, that was, like, like, that was crap, but, like, not all magic is crap. Like, it takes a lot of skill, Dean. Um, <laughs> but this is when... We get the reveal that Sam, when he was 13, used to be into doing magic, which I already knew because all the Sam bloggers had, like, a week where they kept, like, calling him Sammy Kablammy or Sammy K Shazammy or something like that. Were you, were you privy it's to this? It's an adorable fact. Yeah. Yes. It's very, very cute. And I don't know, like... I know that sometimes people can just have interests that are unrelated to their various traumas, but how do we think this interest is related to Sam's various <laughs> traumas? I don't know. I mean, he, he was 13, so it was definitely after he learned that about, yeah. like, monsters. Right. You think so... it's, like, a way to rationalize, like, the supernatural... That could be an interpretation what, like of it, it's, right? It's just, like, another, like, really skilled trick, and there's, like, a way of learning your way around it, you mean? No, more of, like, yeah, like, all, like, those things are, like, actual, like, magic or so, and we can't control them, mm -hmm. but this is, like, like, magic that I can control, and I can learn, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. yeah. Yeah, I agree that that is definitely part of it. I also wonder if, like, at this point, he was like, oh, there's, like, something wrong with me in terms of, like, I can do things or, like, I can feel the demon blood doing something. So, like, I want to focus my energy on, like, magic that is good so I don't have to think about the fact that I might be magic in an evil way, according to my dad or whatever. <laughs> that is so funny. Like, now I'm thinking about Sam moving that cabinet one time in season two or whatever. Yeah. And being like, oh my god, it's magic. <laughs> Which is definitely not what happened. But god, it's funny. I mean, 13 year olds are stupid. Yeah. I mean, they're not, but some are. Anyway, so cute. 
He had a deck of cards and a wand. That's so cute. Um, yeah, He's but so then silly. Sam brings their focus back to the case at hand. So they go to interview Vance's assistant. She's, like, pulling, like, a really long, like, silk, silk scarf out of a bag and then, like, a rabbit and shit while they're talking. Uh, but basically they ask if Vance had any enemies and apparently, yes, basically all the magicians hated him because he would steal their intellectual property. Also, like, to, to like, mention, like, the stuff that she's pulling out, right? Like, the silk scarf, mm-hmm. it's kind of funny because Dean's, like, looking at it the whole time, like, when's this gonna end? And just never does. Mm. But also, why is there just a rabbit there? And why did she put the rabbit in a bag? Yeah, I'm worried about that rabbit's well-being. I'm worried about that rabbit. And it's a very pretty rabbit, too. Yeah, it has, like, long fur. Long hair, yeah. So, so, and then she says that something that she found on Vance's body is the tarot card for the Ten of Swords. And um, it definitely did not belong to Vance because he hated card tricks. Interesting. Interesting how he had that and he was stabbed with ten swords from the ceiling. So uh, now we're in Jay's hotel room and we get a scene that is so old man yaoi. Yeah. Um, (laughs) It's... Like, I knew that I would have heard about it already if Supernatural canonicized this. But, like, still, the whole time I was like, are they, like, is this, um, am I supposed to be getting hints here? Because I'm definitely getting hints here. You know how later when Jay was like, he wasn't just my friend, and I was like, wait, are they doing it? And then he goes, he was my brother. (laughs) Absolutely. That is the supernatural experience. <laughs> God, do you remember, like, in like before? I mean, you don't remember, but I watched Fifteen Twenty Live, and before Fifteen Twenty aired, there was like uh-huh. a little like look back on supernatural, like yeah. thing. You know how like in mm-hmm. house they do that too, right? But like, yeah, they do it. They do it for for Supernatural. And, like, it's so funny being, like, when they were talking about Cass, like, um, Jensen goes, Cass is really the third brother of the show. <laughs> and, like, first of all, there's a there's literal a third, third brother, brother in the show. <laughs> Second of all, he confessed his love to your yeah, character. He just said that he wanted to fuck you raw. <laughs> it's so or, funny. What is the? I'm searching for the specific wording. You know that post <laughs> from like October of 2020 that's like Misha Collins said that like Cass's last words will be really important in this political climate, but the only things <laughs> that'll be important are that if he says Dean Winchester, I want to fuck you so bad and so wrong. But like that's not exactly what the post is phrased as. I don't know the specifics. One day I'll find out and I'll reference it more often. <laughs> I love that Misha Collins actually said that. <laughs> what Cass will say is so important to our political party. <laughs> it's the same fucking energy as his, like, Instagram post of him being like, currently the Supreme Court is taking away all rights for all Americans, but you know what? Cass is gay. <laughs> I mean, he literally is. Like, gay is, like, vague enough that I can continue bycast truthing without, like, being homophobic, right? Like, I don't, I don't, like, is there a point where, like, I mean, Misha Collins isn't a writer, also. I think if there was a point where the writers were, like, he's exclusively attracted to men, I'd be like, okay, fine. (laughs) But currently, he's still bi to me. I don't think that's, like... I don't think when he was like, I've I've loved you since I pulled you out of hell. I don't think he was like an only man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He was never yeah. like, he never said this <laughs> So, I, I love you and only you specifically, like, 
like because you're a guy you're a man go, it's not gonna happen like he would never <laughs> listen again yeah okay cool anyway we're so off topic old man you are old man so yowie. um jay is like in his hotel room he's like doing card trips card tricks he's doing really good uh and then someone knocks on the door and it is charlie and charlie comes in he's like are you gonna tell me how you did it um you know all of this is so funny now that i know the ending but whatever <laughs> yeah Jay clearly he has a pep in his step. He's confident. He's calling himself one of the great ones magician wise. Charlie's like, I mean, yesterday you were sad, old and dying, and now like everything's changed. Like, come on, talk to me. Uh and he says, like, Charlie also says, I didn't think that you could do it. And then he goes, You're my friend, my best friend. I just didn't want to see you get hurt. What is... Okay, I... Like, friendship is a real thing, but also, they... Anyway. (laughs) So... Um... Yeah, so, Jay shows him another trick where he's able to pull the Ace of Spades clubs and diamonds out of the middle of the deck flawlessly. Yeah. I actually Uh, really like mm -hmm. this, like, Like, the little magic tricks that they do. I feel like Julie Siege actually likes magic. I was like, Mm -hmm. let me incorporate it to this episode. And, like, I feel like throughout the episode, like, first of all, that little detail that, like, he was practicing pulling out the ace all his life Mm -hmm. and now he can do it three easy. It's like, Mm -hmm. like, little details like that, I feel like, I mean, I don't know anything about magic, so maybe I'm, like, terribly off-base. But to me, as someone who doesn't know anything about this, it betrays a little bit of a... Like, this is something that the writer, like, actually liked and maybe, like, knew a little bit about. And, like, now it's, like... Yeah, so, I don't know. Because, like, you can easily make an episode about magicians and about magic that feels... Like, they don't feel like people, you know? Like, they are mm-hmm. defined by their, um, like, I don't know, their, like, occupation or whatever. But, like, w- these characters, they are magicians, but they also do genuinely feel like people with, like, actual motivations and stuff. Which yeah. I really like. Yeah. And when they talk about the industry, I'm like, oh, gee, so yeah. true, the industry. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about, like. It feels, like, real in a way, which is, I think, a big part of why I really, like, I enjoyed watching this episode because the people felt real, like, the, you know how, like, Sarah from Providence was, like, an art curator, Mm. but, like, it was, like, nothing? (laughs) Yeah. Like, it was, like, it was nothing. Like, seeing, Mm. like, they could have easily done something like that with this magicians right like yeah they're magicians but like it's whatever but like having them be like so embedded in like the industry and like their motivations Mm -hmm. are run around this theme it's like it's nice it's well written it's a well written episode yeah yeah these are like some of the like probably best like 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 characters who the case happens to that we've seen yeah like they're fleshed out yeah they're fleshed Mm -hmm. out as much as they could be as one off characters that family was so annoying like they tried to give them a backstory and it like just didn't really work yeah but this works yeah this works all they needed was old man yelling yeah (laughs) right because last episode you were talking about how like the the thing that bothered you about family remains is that it started as like like there was an uncle in the family so it was sort yeah, of and different then nobody from, gave like, a shit about it yeah the usual nuclear family dynamic and then like they killed him and the dog and then like no one cared and like this like the relationship structure of this episode yeah! is like so it's unconventional it's, like, yeah 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 like even if they aren't fucking each other raw which i think they are like it's nice that like like at the, so I'm so much, yeah. but at the end when Jay's like, "I'm gonna die alone now," 
Like, I don't like. You I actually really feel liked it. The idea that like, like yeah, this is like his like found family like structure. Like he isn't gonna like date or like adopt or do anything. Like this was like it for him. It's yeah. It's, they are like actual people, and they feel like actual people. Right. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Um, so, Jay says that he's gonna do the executioner tonight, Mm -hmm. um, and then Charlie's like, no, like, please don't, like, you're gonna die, like, not even Houdini would do the executioner, um, and then, like, you know, Charlie keeps, like, begging him not to, and then Jay, like, positions Charlie, like, a bit farther away from him and says something about how, like, we shouldn't, we can't, like, end up, like, a bunch of, like, old people doing birthdays and bar mitzvahs. Charlie says, beats dying, which (laughs) I guess is funny (laughs) now. Um, I mean, okay, I'm gonna bring this up now. I was gonna bring it up towards the end, but I can't stop uh myself. Okay. He was ready to like grow old with these two, which yeah. is like, oh my god! Like he yeah. knew how to be immortal. He knew how to stay young forever, and like, mm-hmm. we are to assume that they, like didn't like Jay say that like they met when he was like in his twenties, like when he was twenty. Yeah. So like at that point, I think Charlie. Already was like mm. immortal in some way, right? Yeah, yeah, because he was, like he, he worked with P.T. Barnum, who was active yeah, in the 1800s. In the 1800s, yeah. So, like, he already w- This is literally that's y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. But this is a better love story than that's y'all. But, <laughs> like, he. Like, he met this guy. He already was like, yeah, like, I could stay this young forever. And then, like, he just decided, like, no, I'm gonna grow old with them. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna wait until I'm in my 60s before I, like, do anything about it. And I want to bring them with me. Yeah. Like, I think, actually, that, like, that, like, um, you know, like, I feel a little bit, like, him, he only did this to make sure that Jay stays alive. Because, yeah. like, he, like, he could have made them successful way earlier. But mm-hmm. he only really did it because Jay was very obviously suicidal. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, did he want to, like, grow old and die with these two? Man! I think he wanted them to be immortal together forever. But I feel like that is the same amount of, like... Commitment. commitment, yeah. Now, I think this Man. guy's gay or something. <laughs> yeah. So at Beats Dying, Jay says, "Does it?" And then Charlie says, "I would do anything for you. You know that." <laughs> what? Is I love it. Um, but I will not watch you die. Is this not... Has Destiel not said something like that? Or am I just making no, Cass, things up? I think Cat said that in, like, oh. season 14 when Dean was, like, gonna toss himself in the ocean. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not well, sure. Like, or I... Maybe it my was face like, is red. Like, I'm sweating. <laughs> like... <laughs> what is saying. happening? I don't, I don't know. Love story of all time, perhaps? Anyway. Honestly, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Charlie says, yeah. Um, And he, like, makes light of it by saying, like, I'll miss that show, like, if you die. And Jay says, no, you'll be there. You're always there for me. Normal things to say. <laughs> Um, and then he says, on one hand, like when this was yeah. happening, I was like, "Yeah, they're friends." <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, and they are, yeah, but they're also yeah. lovers, so good for them. Right. I mean, like, there are friends that like you would think this about and say this to, but like, I think yeah. it's just like a lot of like 
one after the others and like it's not even past midnight and you aren't even like crying or drunk you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um charlie is told to check his pocket and he does and it's the ace of hearts (laughs) scared something I've been saying. What? He literally gave him the ace of hearts. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, I, like the spades is, like, the cool one, you know? Like, if you want to just be like, oh, here's a cool thing that happened, like, you do the spades. The ace of hearts is like, hello? And in his, anyway. in his breast yeah. pocket, like, by his heart. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> no, God, sorry, we can't. I don't want to start sounding like a fucking TJLC or <laughs> I fear that if I if I go further down this path, I'm just going to sound like a TJLC or You were not present during the TJLC days, but um, No, I was not. I like, did not give a shit about Sherlock. Yeah. No, people were sa- were like making graphics where they were like doing meta. And they were like like phone equals heart like breast pocket <laughs> like because like in no, the first episode so Sherlock asks John to get the heart for to, sorry to get his um, to get his phone for for him out of his pocket but yeah oh. this one this one it's like literally the ace of hearts so like we we yeah. are not insane people anyway <laughs> Charlie's like hey that's pretty good and Jay goes, I can do it, Charlie. I want to do it. And, you know, there's, like, shots of them, like, laughing and smiling together. And, like, I don't... It's, like, something about the camera angle is just very, like... It's very romantic. It's very romantic. Well, now we enter a theater where Jeb Dexter is gonna do an interview. And he's gonna be interviewing Jay. As like kind of like a honoring my elders kind of way, <laughs> um, and Charlie and Vernon are just watching this, which is so funny to me. These three are, are they, like, un- inseparable. Are they like part? Well, but they're part of the same act, though, right? Like they're like they? his assistants or something, because Charlie does the rope burning at least. Well, I think the- that was like. Um, Jay says earlier, like, we can't even afford assistance anymore. So, like, I think oh. the implication is they're assisting each other in each other's act. Okay, yeah. They're giving each other a hand winky face. Got yeah. it. Dean comes in. Sam and Dean are, in fact, in this episode. <laughs> Dean asks, like, Vernon, like, oh, like, hey, are you Vernon Haskell? Um, I'm here to investigate the death of Patrick Vince, and then he he holds up um, an FBI ID. And as as this is happening, Jeb and Jay are starting the interview, and it's Jeb being like, "Yeah, I'm Jeb Dexter, and we're at the International Magicians Convention, where I am going to tip my hat to the people who came before me." And then he says, smoking hot effect last night, Jim. And Jay goes, it's Jay. My name is Jay. And it starts like this like background noise of Jab Dexter being like, we'll just cut it in post. We'll loop it later. I don't know why you're being an asshole. You know, it's that's the background. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Dean is talking to Vernon still. Dean is asking about the tarot card that they pulled off the van's body. And he's asking if, you know, if Vernon is familiar with it. Because he used to use tarot cards in his act. But Vernon says that was a long time ago. It's not happening anymore. But there is someone that um, sells these kind of stuff over on Bleecker Street. <laughs> and Charlie immediately catches on. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He sells specialty stuff. And they say, like, Oh, like, Vance, like, pissed him off a year ago, cost him so much money in royalties and stuff. And they go, like, yeah, the address is 26 Bleecker. And then, like, Vernon is doing the talking, and Charlie just goes, like, yeah, ask for Chief. 
And <laughs> Dean's like, okay. And then leaves and Charlie and Vernon just look at each other. So we go to Bleecker Street where we we see that Dean is knocking at the door. So like somebody greets Dean and he's like, oh, I'm looking for the chief. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, come in. And then they come in and they enter this like basement looking place where there's mm. a loud thumping music that you can hear from the distance and you you look around the place and it's kind of dark but there's graffiti everywhere dean is left alone there and the guy's like yeah I'm, don't touch anything just stay there and dean is just waiting 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 when a door opens from like the from other the side of the room is it on the floor it sort of yeah. looked like it was on the floor. It looks... I think it's surface level, and then, like, it goes down. So it looks like it's Got coming it. up. Like, the light looks like it's coming up. So, uh, a guy comes in, and it's a, like, bulky guy. Mm. And he is wearing leather. He's carrying um, a, a flogger. flogger. And he is like, you know, flogging. Like, he's like playing with the flogger with his hands. And then he, we, when we get <laughs> he's, like. He's slapping a, it against his hand. Yeah, yeah. A few times. Yeah. What did I say? You said he's playing with the flogger with his hands, <laughs> which is not I mean, incorrect, yes. <laughs> but sounds sort of like he's jerking the flogger off. <laughs> anyway, um,. When he finally stands still and we get a good look at him, he goes, Ah, oh, you're really gonna get it tonight, big boy. <laughs> and then it's like, There's been a misunderstanding. I think I've been had. I've been had. And the chief goes, Oh, you haven't been you, had. You haven't been had till you've been, till you've had, been by had by, the, by chief. the chief. Chief goes, Oh, before we get sorted, what's your safe word? And Dean, like, does a little, like, face where he looks like he's, like, holding back, like, a vomit. Which I think is rude, but, you know. I yeah. mean, I get it. He's in a situation he doesn't want to be mean. in. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did Vernon and Charlie know about this? They must go to this place, I guess. Yeah. That which, is also you know, my conclusion. <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't know, like, I do genuinely think they were trying to make, like, these three, like, gay? And this okay. is, like, th this scene is, like, my evidence. Huh. Yeah, okay. Because it's, like, they know about, like, the, I would assume, underground gay subculture in this area. Yeah. I mean, it literally is underground. It's a basement. And it is like, literally underground. A basement of a basement. And also, like, they don't frequent... Well, they don't live here. You know what I mean? Like, True. they make a point of saying, like, these guys are on the road all the time. So, yeah. I just don't buy the idea that, like, Oh, like they just know th they know their way around the place. Like, I think this is just. I think they know already their way around this place because it's gay. <laughs> and by virtue of being I, gay. Yeah, I do think that like the reasons I'm I'm reluctant to say that it is on purpose is just because in the opening scene with Jeb, they keep like. Making fun of him for Being wearing like kind of eyeliner and yeah, shaking yeah. his ass, yeah, and it just it does feel vaguely homophobic. So, but I like, think personally, I think that's like more of like an intergenerational thing than like a homophobia thing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, because like okay, like the, the vibe is more wanted like wanted to make it canon. They would have. I I actually I don't know. I don't know. This don't was, know. in fact, in 2009. Yeah. I mean, I just... Yeah, okay. I guess... I just assume that all Supernatural writers are homophobic, so if they meant to do it on purpose, they would have been meaner about it. You know what I mean? I don't know. But, yeah. But also, I don't know, Julie Siege. 
Okay, but also, yeah. we're talking about the people who did Destiel not on purpose, you know? Yeah. Like, they didn't mean to do any of that until people started yelling at them so, so much. You think they, like, you think Julie Siege was like, yeah, no, nothing's happening here at all. Maybe, yeah. But you know what? There was something happening here at all <laughs> to me. Yeah. And that's what's important. That is what's important. And I don't, I mean, with the later reveal that, like, Charlie is evil and, like, trying to, like, tempt them into immortality, like, maybe, like, something is supposed to be happening here, but, like, it's, like, in the same way that, like, villains are queer coded to, like, add a fun new dimension to their evilness or whatever. I don't know. I think she intended them to be besties that were not romantic. But, yeah. I, something sure is happening. We are at the motel room where Sam is staying alone. He's doing some research. Someone knocks th- at the door. He looks through the little peephole and then, like, sighs and opens the door all annoyed. And Ruby's here. She looks fantastic as usual. And, uh, Ruby's like, Hey, like, the entire world is about to end, and you're just here at this magic convention like an idiot. And she also says, like, 34 seals have been broken. Like, 34. Over half. And every day, like, we get closer to the apocalypse, and someone has to do something, and you are that person. It has to be you. Sam does not enjoy the situation. He's like, what do you want me to do? Why are you pressuring me? All of that. Uh, And Ruby's like, hey, like, if the seals are being broken, you should go after the one doing the breaking and cut the head off the snake. She says, like, you're the only one who can stop her, Sam, so step up and kill the little bitch. And Sam says something quite interesting. He says... I'm game, believe me. It's not the psychic thing I have a problem with. Which... So, like, at this point he's accepted the, like, Azazel giving him demon blood and psychic powers thing? Yeah, like, he's and okay he is with just upset. Now? He's just upset about the demon blood. Drinking, right. Cause this is isn't this sort of different from what he told Dean in Metamorphosis, where he's like, "There's like this evil inside of me, and like this is the only way I can make something good out of it." Like, he doesn't think that there's this evil inside of him anymore. He's okay with the psychic powers. I don't think he thinks there's no evil inside of him anymore. I think that. It's not the psychic thing that he has the most problem with, which is a different thing. All right, yeah, okay. Ruby's like, okay, I know what you have a problem with, but it is the only way. Sam refuses again, and then Ruby says, you know, this would all be so much easier if you just admit to yourself that you like it. Um, and I think that this is where, like, I bring up that, like, in 409, we didn't really address the fact that like Sam pushed Ruby away after she kissed him and then she followed him and tried to convince him still and that's like not okay and I feel like this sentence continues to play into the idea of like this being like akin to like a sexual assault like I do you know what I mean like the whole like you know you like it is like like, a staple, like, sentence of yeah. rape culture. Yeah. And, like, yeah. The whole, like, blurred lines issue from way back centers right. around this very phrasing. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that is deliberate here. What I find most interesting... Okay, so after this line, right, Ruby mm-hmm. realizes that, like, this specific tactic it's not working with Sam right now. Mm-hmm. So she changes tactic and she goes, Sam, yep. like, Lucifer is going to rise and the apocalypse yep. are going to start and people are going to mm-hmm. die. So, like, yep. 
like just let me know when you don't want people to die anymore and it's so uh-huh. fascinating to me because i think this scene reminds me a lot of what you said that one time where you said that like in the past ruby was like you have to be tougher sam you have to be just like dean and then mm-hmm. when she realized that that's not working she was like okay then i can be the dean and you can continue mm-hmm. being the sam fundamentally like ruby's intentionality in all of her interactions with sam is to get him to do her bidding yeah and this scene fascinates me a lot because it shows you how she really does just throw everything at the wall to see what yeah no exactly it's like oh like i want to get sam to do this thing and i'll just do anything to like get him to do it and hope that one of them works and it's like in this part she's like oh i'm gonna pull the whole like um oh i know you want it blah 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 like i know that you like actually like it and you just won't admit it and when it doesn't work he's like well people are gonna die does that (laughs) work now (laughs) yeah 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 it's very interesting because yeah i feel like like we're supposed to consider like i feel like supernatural considers her like a master of manipulation but like i don't think she's actually that good at it i think that because like she tries for all of season three and it doesn't yeah. work. Um, and that's probably because, like, she spends too much time in the prologue and doesn't really get to the, like, and now you have to use demon powers to do blah 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 part until it's too late. And then, like, this time she's like, okay, like, go number two. And I feel like it only works because, like, she found him, like, at his most emotionally vulnerable yeah. time in his life. Like, I think she heard from the Crossroads demon, like, Sam was, like, just over here, like, drunk and suicidal, like, and then she was like, oh, well, now is my time to shine. Like, yeah, yeah. like, she uses, like, his grief about Dean to, like, get with him sexually, too, to be able to, like, manipulate him better. Oh, when I was editing Heaven and Hell, mm-hmm. and I was listening to myself say that, like, Oh, Anna, like, bringing up all of Dean's trauma and then being like, yeah, let, let's fuck now. Like, right? why is it that when when Anna did it, I was like, oh, yeah, like, this is bad. But, like, when mm. Ruby did it, I was like, oh, okay. Because, like, the reason why is because when Ruby does it, it's, like, framed as, like, Manipulation, or at least like in retrospect, it's framed as manipulation because we know what she is trying to do. Mm-hmm. But like with Anna, it's played like incredibly straight face. It's like this is just a normal thing people do, right? And it it's like I think that contrast of like framing really does highlight what like what Ruby is trying to do, which is that. This is to, like, take advantage of Sam. And, like, his... Especially that one. It was, like, to take advantage of his grief. Mm-hmm. And, like, she expected Dean to never come back, right? So, like... It's... I feel like it's interesting how she tried to adapt it's when he trying did. to like, do it now, yeah. Yeah, because when... When he first came back, she was like, Oh, like, I can leave for a bit. Um... For, until, like, things, like... Because I don't want to drive a rift between the two of you. And Sam's like, no, I'm going to tell him. And Ruby's like, oh, no, don't do that. So, like, you know, that's, like, step number one. But step number two is, like, even if Sam tells Dean, like, that actually works out pretty well for Ruby. Because she knows that Dean is going to react negatively. Which means that, like, the more Dean knows about sam and ruby's relationship the more that like sam will will no longer have dean in his corner and only have ruby you know what i mean so like yeah no she's not very good at manipulation but because dean is such a fucking asshole like (laughs) everything she does is gonna work i was gonna say that like when my friends are having difficulty in relationship Mm. I make sure to, like, 
when I'm talking to them about it to not center it around like you should be ashamed of yourself or whatever oh yeah because that will push them further into the that relationship because now it's based on shame mm-hmm. you know which is like it is something that is very visible in this um in this dynamic with like Ruby and Sam and Dean right that yeah. like Cause... Dean is pushing the whole like oh, this is disgusting, you should be ashamed of yourself. And in a way, it is pushing Sam further into it. Right, yeah. Like, Dean's reaction is never, like, oh, no, like, it seems like she's manipulating her and I'm, like, worried about you. It's just, like, oh, and you fell for it and now you're besties? Like, yeah. Oh, God, I'm angry at you because you're so stupid and you're so gullible. Yeah. Right. And, like... He doesn't react in a, like... I mean, maybe this is what his concern looks like. But, like... It's... It's fucked. It's very fucked. And yeah. he doesn't offer Sam any compassion about it. It's just like, stop being stupid and ruining my life by making me have to see her or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And, like, now they are at an interesting place because... Dean is not as mad at her that's true I don't know when he becomes re-mad at her probably when he finds out about the blood drinking or something I mean yeah this also works for Ruby because Sam's in a spot where he's like oh like finally Dean's like not trying to kill like my girlfriend who's not my girlfriend anymore so like I can't do anything to rock the boat so I really have to keep the demon blood thing under wraps yeah. Like, it all just works out really well, despite her not being that good at manipulation. So, wow. So, as you said, Ruby pulls the, okay, you know what? People are going to die, and it's going to be your fault. You're going to cause all of them to die. Goodbye. And leaves. <laughs> um, And we cut to the theater where, you know, Sam and Dean meet back up. Neither of them have found anything interesting Dean does not tell Sam what the situation he encountered was Uh, and you know Sam also doesn't tell Dean about the situation he encountered meanwhile Vernon and Charlie are like discussing how Jay's gonna do the executioner and Vernon's like no like you you have to stop him like why didn't you try He's going to die. And Charlie's like, no, like, I tried really hard, but there was something in his eyes. Uh, so, Sam and Dean show up, talk to them, and Dean's like, so, you sent me to the chief, huh? And, you know, Charlie and Vernon are both like, haha, yeah, we got you. And Dean's like, I could have you arrested, and... They're like, oh, no, you can't because, like, all magicians are, like, grifters and shit. And we could tell that you were not a real FBI agent. You know, instead of being, like, hunters or cops, they should have just made hunters, like, magicians for (laughs) it. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Sam and Dean are both like, ah ha ha, you got us, um, we're actually, um, aspiring magicians, and, uh, we came to the convention to learn things. Right, that's so stupid, and that required you to pretend to be FBI agents to ask about a murder? What, how's that related to being an aspiring magician? (laughs) I love how they do it. Pretty much at the same cadence that they talked to um, the girl who had the oh, Audrey, big giant teddy bear. Yeah. Whatever her name was. They yeah. were like, like when they were like, we're teddy bear doctors. And they were like, <laughs> we're aspiring magicians. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. God bless. Yeah, so they're like, oh, we have like a new show that we want to do. It's like a brother act with like like rings and and doves and rings and you know what i was waiting for them to make the joke it's gonna be called supernatural and they didn't so good for them (laughs) it literally is gonna be called supernatural yeah 
Uh, so Jay starts doing his act. Um, and it's similar to earlier where um, it's cutting between the act and another magician. This time the other magician is Jeb. And... It's so funny because, like, with Jay, it's like mm-hmm. music, it's like swelling and like, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, every time it comes to Jeb Dexter, it's just metal music. <laughs> Yeah, the song <laughs> this... is called Douchebag Museum by Christopher Leonard, so they probably picked it because of the title. Yeah. And it is quite funny because, like, it makes this scene unintentionally funny, I think. And, like, every time we cut back to Jeb, he is staring at the mirror, doing a mirror He's face. posing. Yeah. yeah, you know, like, the face you do in front of a mirror when you're like, ugh, do I look good? And you're like, ugh, that's the face that he's doing the entire time, until he is hanged yeah. to death. Yeah, sorry, Jeb. The trick is that Jay is put in a straight jacket, and then his head is put in a noose, and then, like, mm-hmm. in a minute, he has to be able to get out, or he's gonna be hanged to death. And, you know, it's the the screen again, so you can only see the silhouettes. While Jeb is posing, there's, like, a rope that sort of just, like, starts forming itself into a noose and then creeping towards him while he's yeah. posing and shit. And then, like, in the last second, Jay hasn't made it out. The noose loops around Jeb's neck, and then attaches to the ceiling fan and then it kills him and oh the curtain is pulled aside and Jay is alive and Dean's like cheering and clapping like oh my god that was so cool and Sam is just frowning and he goes that was not humanly possible man Dean's all like, I can't believe people believe this shit. And then he's out here believing this shit. He's so real. Yeah. I think it's cute that Sam was the one who figured it out. Because I think, like, maybe some of his his 13-year-old magic background (laughs) helped him know what was possible and what wasn't. So... In a hotel room, Sam and Dean are talking about how Jay was big in the 70s and he, like, played Radio City Music Hall. And Dean's like, well, what, what happened to him? And Sam's like, well, what happened to everyone in showbiz? He got old. Dean is saying maybe he's using real magic? They start inferring, like, maybe the tarot is involved. Blah, blah, blah. And then Dean says, man, I hope I die before I get old. Like, God, well, it seems brutal. Good news. Good news, Dean. <laughs> Dean, Sam just asks if he really thinks that, if they really will die before they get old. Dean is like, well, we have both done that already. Sam just pushes through, says, like, do you think we're going to be chasing demons until we're 60? Dean says, I think by then we'll be dead for good. You want to end up like Travis or Gordon? Which is such a good Gordon was not fucking 60. Gordon was, like, 30. (laughs) Yeah, like, Travis makes sense because Travis is an old guy. But, like, like, Gordon was, like, like their age. (laughs) Gordon was their age. Sam goes like, there's Bobby. And Dean says, yeah, Bobby, poster child for growing old gracefully. And I was like, don't be so mean to your elders. What did Bobby do wrong? He literally is. He literally is the poster child for growing old as a hunter gracefully. Like, he's still doing the work. And he has a nice enough house. And he has friends and a lot of connections, and he helps people out. And also, I understand that, like, they only met um, Rufus once at this point. It was just Right, Dean yeah, too. but I'm surprised that he wasn't mentioned. What, the la- when we spoke... <laughs> I love how we're saying, when we spoke to Rufus, like, 
<laughs> I didn't speak to him. Dean spoke to him. But when well, Dean I spoke did. to Rufus, when Dean spoke to Rufus, that was their conversation, right? Like mm-hmm. about like, like Rufus like growing old and retiring, basically, and like how Dean is not gonna do that because he's gonna die young or whatever, because you know yeah. his deal is coming up. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't have to hunt for the rest of your life. Like, Rufus, yeah. you literally have a guy who retired. Like, you can mm-hmm. actually do that. I don't know, it's just... Like, it's a bit yeah. odd. It is. It's a bit odd. Anyway, Deedon says that it's it either ends bloody or sad, and that's just it. Sam goes, well, what if we could win? Uh, what if we could, like... You know, just put an end to it all. And Dean is like, Ah, oh, is there something I should know about? And Dean evades the question and says that, like, I wish we could just cut the head off the source. You know, cut the head off the snake. And Dean is like, Yeah, I mean, probably not gonna happen, though. Should we go look at look for Jay? <laughs> and then they do. Yeah. I... I like that, like, like Ruby tried the whole, like, everyone's gonna die tactic because her thought is, like, oh, like, Sam's an altruistic person, like, this will, like, work or whatever, but, like, Sam, like, agrees to come back at the end because he just wants, like, a better life for himself and to not die young. I feel like, and, like, I don't know, that's nice. Sorry, Sam, that you always striving for a better life which is something that you've wanted since you were a child is what's gonna doom you once more. F. Also, another thing about the scene is that, like, like the dialogue is about as corny as most supernatural dialogue, but, like, while I was watching it, I was like, huh, I don't feel like this is that corny. And then I realized that the reason is because there's no piano music. (laughs) God! (laughs) I completely <laughs> forgot to mention, I think in, like, the last three episodes or something, that, like, mm. literally anytime anything happens, the music is <laughs> so in your face, and uh-huh. they just push through with it. And, yeah, this scene didn't have sad music, and that is a big right. reason why it's fine. Yeah, yeah. If in any other episode with any other music track, I would be, like, saying, it's so corny, it's so corny, after every sentence you said. Um, when they go look for Jeb, they see that on his body is the tarot card for the hanged man. Uh, and then they also notice that, like, hey, the two people who died so far are people who were mean to Jay. So... He's probably like doing some kind of death transference thing. Onto I mean, them this is also so cards. interesting. Like, not yeah. mean to Charlie. Yeah. Mean to Jay specifically. Yeah. And also mm-hmm. specifically, like, there's no even like, oh, he just happened to be mean to Jay. And, but like, you know, like, there's other inciting factors. Like, when he was asked why he chose dance, he was like, that guy was disrespecting you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, no, I yeah. Something about the Charlie and um Jay relationship is so Sam Ruby, but I guess I'll get into it when the reveal happens. Sam isn't able to like follow Jay properly because he was able to slip him. And then they decide to just go into his hotel room with their guns fucking out. And, you know, shouting, like, hey, like, up, go up against the wall, we know what you did, we know you put a spell on those tarot cards doing real magic. And Jay's like, what? There's no such thing as real magic, it's all just, like, illusions and shit. And Dean's like, oh, so Jeb Dexter, like, found dead and hanged was an illusion. Jay's like, oh no, what? Something happened to Jeb? Um, and... You know, he just clearly does not know what's going on. He clearly did not do anything. Sam and Dean are, like, whispering to each other, like, huh, what do we do? And it cuts to this old man tied in a chair. 
For what? They've already established that he didn't do it. And also, it's just, like, wacky, like, it's to set up, like, wacky hijinks. Like, yeah. oh, he escapes, and Sam and you get caught by the police. Like, yeah. bruh. He bruh. literally is, is, an, is an escapologist. Like, fuck <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah, so as you said, the wacky hijinks are that... Sam and Dean have their back turned to Jay and are whispering to each other about how if it's not him, it's like one of his friends, someone in his, in his corner. Um, and then when they turn back around, Jay has escaped. So Sam and Dean run out of the room to find him. And then it turns out he was hiding in the closet, slay. <laughs> um... And then while Sam and Dean are running around, the police show up because Jay called them from the closet. And then he's like, go, officers, arrest them, <laughs> etc. Uh, and then we have a talk between Jay and Charlie. Um, and Jay's like, they were saying that, like, there was real magic involved in my act and it, like, actually killed Vance and Jeb back then. And Charlie's like... Oh, that's ridiculous. No. And Jay's like, well, I mean, like, my sudden skill is pretty weird. And those deaths were pretty coincidental. And Charlie's like, oh, I mean, there was no great loss there. Like, he literally hates them so much for being mean to Jay, like, one time. Charlie's like, like, stop believing what they said. You're being ridiculous. And Jay says, maybe I shouldn't do the show tonight, then. And Charlie goes, like, are you kidding me? You have a sold-out house out there. Like, you have to. Also, we find out, when we later see the scene where he's, like, doing the show, a sold-out house is, like, 40 people. <laughs> 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 like, God. <laughs> No wonder he's so depressed. <laughs> yeah. God, more, I, mean, I know they more probably people just listen to this podcast. <laughs> to this fucking like... podcast that a sold out show for Jay. <laughs> <sighs> oh boy. So fi Jay finally confesses that um, the table of death thing was like intended as like he was trying to kill himself like it was a suicide attempt that he just managed to get out of alive but he has no clue how and charlie does not really give this its proper weight he just goes like but you did make it out alive <laughs> yeah and then he says like you know back in your day you were the best i ever saw and now you got it back it doesn't matter how like, just seeing you like this again, it makes me feel young. And, you know, one more, like, you gotta do the show, like, don't throw away this gift. Now that I think about it, like, it's so funny that he decided that the next victim is gonna be him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he no, was that like... was really, really funny for him. <laughs> I mean, he's like, yeah, let's traumatize this guy to hell and back, baby. I mean, I think probably the reasoning is, like, he'll be so happy to see me again that it'll make him more likely to say yes to the immortality thing. Yeah. Which is, yeah, very, like, you know, if his brother won't be dragged to hell from hell, but dragged to hell by hellhounds, I can at least engineer something like it. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, uh, the Table of Death is happening again. Um, and, you know, same thing as before. Spikes go down, it looks like he gets hit, but then he's okay. And then there's screams from backstage. And Charlie is dead. In quotes. Woo! With those ten stab wounds in him. Woot woot. Yeah. We are back at the hotel lobby where Sam and Dean were caught earlier. And 
um, Sam and Dean are like, yeah, thank you for bailing us out or dropping the charges or whatever. Can, like, even if you drop the charges, does that mean they're just free to go? Um, I guess because, like, it's only, like, his word against theirs, right? It's not like Uh. anyone else has evidence that they did anything. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, could have just been like, whoopsie, they were just like doing a fun little prank on me because I'm like famous and they wanted to meet me. Like, I don't care enough to send them to jail about that, bring them back, or whatever. Sam and Dean go to a bar where they start talking. And they really hammer home, like, the backstory. Yep. Jay was, like, this kid who... I think, like, the implication was he, like, gambled for money and then, like, was a card... Was cheating at cards. Mm -hmm. Which does remind me of Caravaggio... Of one of Caravaggio's paintings. It's, Uh um, basically, like... I forgot the title of the painting. I think it's, like, The Magicians or something. But it's basically, like... Mm. Um, like, basically these two, I think it's like card trick or something, and it's these two guys, like, pulling card tricks against this rich, like, aristocrat that they're playing with. Mm. Like, the reason why that was, like, powerful or whatever is that, like, yeah, like, these two who, these two guys who are, like, pulling the wool over this rich person's eye it's like taking money from him stealing money from him or whatever whatever mm. but even if that guy goes home with an empty pocket that day he's gonna go home to a beautiful house yeah. to servants to money that these two cannot even begin to fathom so it's kind mm. of like um, kind of like a I don't know like let fucking four people steal shit kind of <laughs> painting, I guess. Which nice. I agree with. Anyway, um, he was in fact that guy from the Caravaggio painting, and Charlie uh-huh. like taught him tricks of the trade. I guess quite literally tricks of the magic trick yeah. trade, and then mm-hmm. like that's kind of how they started, like. Like, Charlie was mentoring him. They just started being buddies who were successful magicians. And then old and faded. And he says, he was more than my friend. He was my brother. <laughs> my brother. Love that. God. I, ah. Uh, the, the one second between those two sentences when I was like, holy shit. Was was one of the most joyous of my life, and then it was gone. It was gone for me forever. Jay is saying, I should have listened to you guys. Sam and go like, but you didn't do it. It's okay. And he is dead set on revenge. Yeah, Sam starts inquiring whether Vernon might be the guy. Jay's like, no! Like, we're family, you know? And Sam is like, yeah, Charlie and Vernon were your family, Jay. And Dean comes in and goes, but now Charlie's gone. Which is like, I don't know, it's so fucking funny to me. But yeah, uh, Jay clarifies that like, no, Vernon would never do that. And then Dean says, see, the thing about real magic is it's a whole lot like crack. People do surprising things once they get a taste of it. And mm-hmm. like, the camera okay. is so obviously pointing at Sam. Uh, it's like, oh, start of the whole blood, un- blood, demon blood yeah, drinking is a drug thing. Yeah. thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jay is like, okay, but I, this needs to be true because Vernon's all I got left. Sad. Mm. So Sam and Dean go to Vernon's room and just look for shit. Like, we start there and, like, Jay calls Vernon to be like, come to the theater with me. Mm -hmm. And Sam and Dean enter and Sam's like, wow, this place is, like, so full of magic stuff. Yeah. And, you know, they start exploring the room. We're back at the theater. 
And Verna comes in, and he's saying, Jay, the headliner gig is yours in this convention. And Jay Very is, you know, weird looking, reaction after your mutual best friend dies. died. Yeah. <laughs> quite weird, quite odd. And Verna's like, right. uh, Jay turns around and he's looking so forlorn. He goes, a day ago. If you told me I can be standing at the stage, but no, I can't do it, Vernon. And Vernon's like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "It is very obvious what he is talking about. It is so yeah. obvious. It there is nothing more obvious than what he is talking about." Yeah, but for Jay's someone like, yeah. who didn't kill Charlie, he is being very suspicious. <laughs> yeah, and Jay just says Charlie's gone, and Vernon is doing the thing where it's like, this is what he would have wanted. This is your shot. Our shot. Which is, you know, like, mm-hmm. sends alarm bells ringing in Jay's head. And Jay's like, Charlie is dead. And Vernon's like, he was my friend too, you know? Jay starts accusing him at this point. Like, oh, is that how you treat a friend? You kill him? For what? So we could be back on top. For, first of all, it is odd to me that, like, you kill him so that I could be back on top. Like, right. I don't think Vernon and Jay have that kind of... Vernon is deterred in this relationship. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The whole he was my friend too thing feels very much like how... Whenever Cass dies, they only focus on Dean's grief. <laughs> like, Sam's just supposed to be fine with it. Slay. Slay. Yeah, Vernon's like, dude, you're scaring me. What are, you, what are you talking about? And Jay keeps on berating him. And suddenly, somebody shows up. And he's like, mm-hmm. it would be so hard of him, Jay. He didn't do it. And then Gasp. we go to Vernon's hotel room again. And Dean is just looking through a bunch of posters. And then he sees a poster of someone with a birthmark on their by their eyebrow. And he's like Which Charlie this, has. Yeah, this is look like someone we know. Charlie has that birthmark. And I remember thinking while watching this episode. I love that birthmark on him. Like, I'm, like, you know, like, having a birthmark on your face, I'm sure that, like, does things to you, even if it's, like, not even an unflattering birthmark, like, it's on this guy. I'm glad he became an actor, even if he has a birthmark. Turns out, it's probably a fake birthmark. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) perhaps. Sad. Ugh. Anyway, Sad. we go back to the theater, and it is in fact Charlie, but now as like a twenty-eight year old or something. And he's played by Lucas from House MD, even though you didn't notice. J- uh, Charlie is like, "Wow, it feels good to be young." And Jay's like, "What the hell? How old are you?" Um, and he says, "Like technically, I'm twenty-eight, but I've been around for so long. I was with Barnum." He gave me everything. He gave me the grimoire, which we see a lot of later. Mm. I don't know if it's the grimoire, or maybe it's a grimoire. I think it's just a grimoire. But like what we see with Rowena later is like, it's real shit. That like, I think it's like made of human skin or something. And he said like, yeah, I thought it was a scam, but then the spells worked. And then at the end, there's a spell for immortality. And I started using it. And he pulls out, like, um, a deck of tarot cards. And he he tells them, like, don't touch it. You don't even know what I will do. And Jay says, well, you killed Vance. You killed Jeb Dexter. And Charlie says, like, you think this is a parlor game? You were being humiliated by those spots. <laughs> You you wouldn't yeah. even defend yourself. Right. Wild and shit. also, like, specifically, like, he says that this is, like, a 
like this is a different spell than the immortality spell. Like he pulled this out specifically just to help Jay with his career and also kill those guys. Yeah, and he reveals to Vernal that like this is a gift that I gave to you. You wanted to kill yourself. I saved your life. And he says like I was there for you like I've always been. Like I'll always be. Come with me both of you. Like, we're gonna have a blast. None of the aches and pains, like all the know-how, blah, blah, blah. And they just refuse. Well, Vernon's considering it. I think so. Jay says no. But Charlie says, like, I've never had friends like two of you before. (sighs) And I've never offered this to anyone before. So let me do this for you. And Jay says... Well, what's the price tag? Someone has to die. And, like, this isn't right, Charlie. Like, what you're doing is not right. And then Charlie says that, like, I don't want to come back alone to start all over alone. Which, oh! Yeah. 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 Vernon, Vernon kind of gets this. He goes, like, we can be young again. Charlie is saying, the three of us together, vital and alive, forever. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Dean, Dean comes in and says Chi Long Lang's iconic line. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> Not so fast. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, but, okay, speaking about the Sam Ruby of it all, like, I Wait, like a long I have a question. Pump. Yeah. How did Dean figure out that... What was the poster that he saw? Um, the poster was, like, an old poster from, like, the, like the 1900s. Like, early 1900s or something. <laughs> so he was like, uh, okay. oh, I mean, Charlie is old, but he's not that old. <laughs> so he must okay. be, like, was, like, some kind of an immortal... Speaking of the Sam Ruby of it all, this feels so, like, Lucifer rising. Like, first off, the, like, him killing those people because they were making fun of Jay is very, like, not funny. <laughs> and then, like, not funny. <laughs> and then killing that demon in, um, the 409 flashback. And, like, I don't know, this is so, like, yeah, it's, like, he genuinely thinks that, like, both of them will be, like, happy about this and want to take the deal. Like, I don't I really like the idea of, like, people who haven't really felt, like, love before, like, feeling it for the first time, but because they're, like, also hashtag evil, like, the ways that they express it betray how much they really don't know the person that they purport to love. And, I don't know, this, the whole, like, dark gift, blah 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 shit here feels very like Ruby's, like, I'm giving you these powers and we're gonna rule hell together and won't that be so great? What do you mean you're upset? And Jay uses the whole, like, you used me terminology as well, so. Uh, while you were saying that, I felt the need to clarify that when Hannibal tells Will that (laughs) I gave you a gift but you didn't want it, Will replies didn't I? Oh. And um, yeah it's crazy. Anyway Sam and Dean enter and they're saying like no not too fast (laughs) you're not gonna be mortal and then Charlie just like starts choking him like, like hanging him I don't know. Stuff happens. Yeah, Sam gets put on the table. Sam gets put on the table. And, like, suddenly, Charlie gets stabbed in the stomach. And he is bleeding out. And what happened was, Jay stabbed himself. Like, he pickpocketed a bunch of cards. Like, the tarot cards from Charlie. Mm-hmm. And then left one that's like a, I don't know someone getting stabbed or whatever. And then it he was stabbed the himself. Oh really? Yeah. He's he stabbed himself. So 
like the 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 death would the transfer injury to Charlie transfers to Charlie and Charlie yeah. is like you pick these strangers over me and then dies and Sam's yeah. like yeah and Sam and Dieter are fine hell yeah and it's so delicious because I feel like Jay would only have the skill to do that because of the spell that Charlie put on him like, because we yeah, see later, indeed. and he can, like, barely shuffle a deck of cards. Like, yeah. evil contains the seeds of its own destruction, but the evil seeds are because of love, etc., etc. Wow. Poetic. <sighs> we got to the a bar where Jay is hanging out, and he's, like, trying to shuffle a deck of cards, and, like, he's, like, not doing well. Poor guy. Sam and Dean come in, and they're, like, trying to do a nice thing where they're like, hey, we wanted to thank you for saving our lives yesterday. And Jay says, who give a shit? Um, but specifically, he's very upset because, like, he killed his best friend yesterday. And Vernon left, doesn't want to speak to him ever again because he killed Charlie. And... Dean says some dumb shit about how, like, you know Charlie was never gonna give up what he was doing, so you did the right thing. And, you know, Jay, thankfully, is not having it. Like, I'm really glad that we have an episode where, like, the, like, people that they quote-unquote save, but, like, not really, are, like miserable and not grateful you know because yeah it's so annoying to have like people week after week be horribly traumatized and have that trauma never like uh, manifest itself as anger at sam and dean so yeah jay says like are you sure about that in response to dean saying that which i think is like a like makes sense because Charlie said that this was, like, the first time he had friends like them. Like, this is, like, his, like, go number one at, like, love and shit. Like, he's not gonna be very good at it, but, like, maybe later he will be. He says, like, Charlie was, like, my brother, and now he's dead because I did the right thing. He offered me a gift, and I just threw it back in his face. So now I have to spend the rest of my life old and alone. What's so right about that? And oh, this was so interesting so to me because good. yeah, while it was happening, I was thinking to myself: every time they do something like this in Supernatural, it always goes roundabout to like what is happening with Sam and Dean. You know mm-hmm. how like when Anna was like, I was on the road with a father who wouldn't even respond. It was like, no, you weren't. <laughs> you were not on the road. That's like, you're only saying that because this is a Sam and Dean show. This yeah. one, the whole time it was happening, I was thinking, oh, how are they going to like circle back to this with Sam and Dean? Or like, what, what's the what's the relation? Whatever. But like, mm. they're it's not as direct. Yeah. Like, whatever conclusion Sam gets from this, it's not direct in that way. Which, mm. and it's, that that makes it feel like this is actually something Jay is experiencing yeah. as I a agree. person, as, like, a character, like, devoid of Sam and Dean, you mm. know? Yeah. He is just, this is just what he's feeling and like he does not exist in service of furthering Sam and Dean's journey or whatever Mm -hmm. I like that yeah I do find it annoying the brother language though cause like it's like you know we've already talked about Supernatural and the nuclear family and like I feel like the only reason that they consider like this an acceptable model for a relationship is because they say that they're like brothers and so that's like Sam and Dean's family structure so then they're like okay well that's okay then but like 
if I feel like if they were like this is queer platonic or romantic, like it, I they just would not, they would not allow it to happen. So sad. Um. Also, like during this whole scene, like yeah, Sam is coming to a realization of his own, but it's not direct because he looks very emotional and teary at all of this. I do think there's, like, a way to look at this as a direct thing. Like, as, like, the gift, like, being, like, Ruby's demon blood thing and the powers that Sam is going to get from them, but I feel like that's not really what Sam is thinking. So, that's interesting. Though, I think maybe just the general idea of, like, you should redefine what you think the right thing is, is something that sticks with him. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, Um, like, like mm. one is to one, you know? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Jay decides to leave, and he leaves his card deck on the table, and the bartender's like, Hey, Jay, like, your cards. And he says throw them away. And, you know, everyone's very miserable. Dean says that he's gonna get a beer and Sam says, I'm gonna take a walk. And we go to the last scene. It's dark. Um, There's an alleyway with a car parked in front of it. We're all very serious and emotional and then suddenly there's this one car that, like, did looks you notice like that it, one car that yeah. just fucking it looks exactly bounces? Like the Impala. It looks like the Impala. And like it looks like the tire pressure is insane because it is like <laughs> bouncing down the road. Yeah. <laughs> Which really undercuts the tension of everything. But you know, after that car <laughs> passes by, Sam walks in, he opens the door to the car. And it's Ruby's car. And I wish I was one of the people who knew what car models were so that I could say something about her choice of car but I can't and he goes in the door and he tells her okay I'm in and Ruby asks what changed your mind and like I feel like I would expect more sarcasm from her but like this is a moment where it seems like she just genuinely does want to know And I'm sure, like, part of why she wants to know is, like, for manipulation purposes to put in her Sam file. I also think she's just curious because she is familiar with him in a way as a person and somewhat fond of him. Like, every time I say, like, they're in love for real, like, what I mean is, like, this is, like, not real, but there are moments of real affection that I see come through in their relationship and those things make me so insane and I feel like this is one of the moments. Yeah. Um, And then he says, I don't want to be doing this when I'm an old man. Which doesn't make any sense because if you're not no doing idea. this, you'll die. <laughs> like, what I do you mean? I love this because it's like, you know, I think I love this episode because it's like, it is not about Sam and Dean. Yeah. Like, all the Sam and Dean scenes kind of don't make sense. <laughs> I think Julie Siege just wanted to write about all these other people. And Sam and yeah. Dean just happened to be there. Like, I even like at these the, are like, like OCs even... that she's developed for a while, but she's like, well, they can't carry a whole thing on their own. Let's put them into Supernatural. Yeah. And, like, what's especially funny to me is, like, usually... Sam and Dean save people like in a way, right? Mm. They do absolutely no saving in this episode. They yeah. show up. They make Jay aware Jay of the situation. Saves maybe. Them. Uh-huh. Yeah, Jay saves them. So yeah. like, okay, yeah. What? So yeah, I think that's. I think that could be it for our, um, post episode synopsis but do you have anything more no old man yaoi old man yaoi okay best line worst line huh what's your best line um i 
I really liked, so now I have to spend the rest of my life old and alone. Like, it's very, like, yeah. oh, like, yeah, I believe that. And you're right, like, these people are it for you. Yeah. Very emotionally affecting. I actually, I don't know, I... I like that he offered me a gift and I just threw it back in For his face. For Hannibal reasons. <laughs> For Hannibal reasons. Yeah. So, What's the worst line? Um, Every time Sam and Dean spoke to each other, I'm like, girl. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess I don't like the whole like, you want to end up like Travis or Gordon? Oh yeah, that was fucking annoying. And then be Dean be, being like, so "Oh yeah, Bobby. Bobby, poster yeah. child for growing old, graceful, he's fuck really off. fine. He's doing fine. fine. He's nice. Asshole. He's normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what's your best yeah. and worst? Oh, well, it's your worst, oh, I guess. I. I can't think of any besides yours. I mean, I guess it was not nice of them to make fun of Jeb's eyeliner. Yeah, I guess. But mostly I agree with what you said. I just want to see if there's anything else. And there isn't. Yeah. How about our... Um... Spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. This one, I think it's interesting. We don't have racism, we don't have misogyny. Well, because there's no women in it. Well, there's Ruby or in it, but like, there's no color. Dean yeah. and Ruby in it. That's yeah, the important yeah. part. The halophobia. I think... Okay, there's the chief and there's the eyeliner. Yeah. And I think the chief thing is homophobic in that, like, like, they could have sent him to, like, a dominatrix or something, right? But, like, yeah. they were like, it'll be extra funny if it's a leather daddy. So, that's I something. don't know. It, like, I, I, I hesitate to s- call it homophobia. Really? I mean, if okay. this was in any other show... I mean, like, I don't think it's homophobic. That's true, but, but like, because it's in Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is in Supernatural, though. It is, yeah, exactly. And it is in 2009, which I think, sometimes, like, I forget how the era means that, like, things that I just find, like, fun and normal would be homophobia. Like, that poor dead gay intern... <laughs> That stuff was homophobic when it was written because of the parts of it that were supposed to be funny. So, I, I think there's something there. Also, we gave yeah. we gave Wishful Thinking a one <laughs> just for Dean calling Amaretto a girl drink. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can give this a two. Okay, yeah. That seems correct. Yeah. Okay, zero zero okay. two. We did it. Well, I would say this is probably a mid eight episode. Mm. For the eight point four is my guess. Yeah, okay. we are in. In fact, the IMDb. Yeah, I see, I really liked it, but like I don't know how other people are gonna feel about it because okay they. A lot of people hate when episodes don't focus on Sam and Dean. Sam and Dean, yeah. So, but I, it was compelling. I was compelled. I don't know whether to go above or below you. I, I'm gonna go above just because it's what my heart says, even though I know I'm wrong. So an eight point yeah, five. Bro, it's a seven point nine. What is it? What for? What? Why? What do they hate about it so much? Wasn't and also like okay, Family Remains was a seven point nine two, which that one at least makes sense. But what do they dislike about it? They think the chief's thing is queer bait with Dean. Huh? Wait, that's why it's rated low. 
No, this one is actually a 10 over 10. But... Oh. I mean, like, if you wanted to, you could read his, like, I think I'm gonna throw up thing as a I think I have COVID horny thing. If you wanted... People like to cut that scene so it goes straight from the guy showing up to Dean swallowing to make it seem more like an arousal response. So, I can see why some people would think that, but I don't know. It's just clearly just them having a laugh. Okay, thank God. Cubs and Culture calls it one of the very best episodes of tragic comedy to its core. And it says that it's one of the most overtly homosocial and or homoerotic episodes in the entire series with the bond between Jay and Charlie. Yeah, they say it almost plays out like a Hayes Code era gay villain, which I think is correct. That's that's the that's the review that I coded. Oh, oh yeah, no, it does say that it's queer baiting with Dean to have the cheek. I mean, maybe, like, like with an established pattern, you could, like, put it in as one of the things. Uh. But, yeah. Okay, yeah, this one references Rufus and Dean's conversation. Yeah. Which, yeah, correct. It is because very it is important to this episode. About. This one ends with, it just starts with talking about the episode, and then it ends with, like, this is why I stopped watching at season nine. It gets depressing the longer it goes. Because it's just the sheer time these two guys have spent in this miserable situation. So real. I mean, so do we. Yeah. Yeah. None of these really explain why they don't like the episode. Yeah. But I think what happens is when fewer people rate an episode, it is most of the time rated lower. Right. Because only people with very strong opinions either way would come in. Yeah. Like, for example, um, Heaven and Hell was an 8.8, right? And Mm 5.6k people rated it. This Uh one has 4.6k ratings and it's rated lower. I I mean, recently, um, I've been re-watching Kim's Convenience. Mm -hmm. And I looked up the IMDb for that. And it just shockingly low and i'm like oh it's because less people watch it barry boast there's there's a review uh praising barry bostwick right so i went to his um to his imdb page Uh and literally the first thing in his description is tall and an an open close (laughs) parenthesis six four (laughs) wow just like jared padalecki I love that. He is literally tall, 6'4". Okay, I think that's it for this episode of Us Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 13, um, After School Special! Oh, okay. Yeah, leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on we're gonna social see media. The, we're going to see the jacket. We're going to see the leather jacket. And it's going to be on Teenage Dean. Aww. That's nice. Yeah. And we get to see... Is this the one where Sam and his English teacher talk? He's in high talk? school. Yeah. Yeah. What a sweet kid. I guess middle school. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr, actually, at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is badpod, B-A-B-pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. And check out our merch at badpod.redbubble.com. Yeah. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, or inquiries, you can email us at bustationbeautyspot at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye! Bye. She said, I have sensitive hearing. Don't laugh so loud. Oh. She's just like your cat from 
four eleven or four ten. Yeah. That, you know what? That cat has not stopped biting me. I think maybe he just hates me. Huh? But he loves maybe. to be on my bed. This is the issue. He would go to my bed, and I'd be like, "Hi, hey, uh-huh. you're in my bed," and then he just starts biting me. <laughs> it's a lovely experience. Does he like enjoy being in your bed when you're not there? No, he only goes to my bed when I'm in there. Like he only goes there to bite you. <laughs> well, I like to think that he goes there because he loves me and he wants to cuddle. But I think he also wants to uh-huh. bite me. I mean, maybe this is just like a cute aggression response. Like maybe oh, yeah. he loves you so much that he can't handle it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's all anyway. About that. Yeah, it's chew toy era for me. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I watch, I watch Red and Link, and they often say that、uh, when they were in grade school or something. They were made to memorize every county in North Carolina.、Mm. So, so like they were very familiar with the North Carolina counties. Like they can name like all hundred of them or something, because they were trained to do that from a young age. Did Did you ever experience that? Like、oh, whichever no, no whichever、counties. state you're from, whatever. Do you have counties in? <laughs> In the whatever state、uh, you're from, <laughs> I don't know. There were counties in the whatever state I'm from, <laughs>、um, but I did not memorize them. I feel like I could probably list a decent amount of them because of like a research project that I did at school, but、um, mm-hmm. probably not all of them. Oh yeah, I mean I do remember that one time that a writer went to your school and asked you where you lived, and you couldn't <laughs> say, and she was like, "You should figure it out." You do live here, right? <laughs> she was, yeah. She was like, "Oh, did you just move here?" And I was like, "No." And she was like, "Maybe you should look at a map sometime." And I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I was humiliated by Victoria Chong, author of Barbie Chong, and also like the boss, which was the poetry book we were reading of hers." But yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, and then she signed my copy of the but of the boss with like, glad I got to help you get oriented or something. Like, shut up, Victoria. That's sweet though. I feel like that's a more memorable experience than if she just went, "Hi, sign, bye." You know. I, I would rather have for a、life. neutral. Ex- <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And it's so terrible because I was already discussing with my English teacher how I wanted her to fuck me so bad before this. Anyway,、uh, yeah, Crystal has a very normal reaction to people with authority. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the podcasters、okay. need not know that. The podcast listeners need not know that. Yeah, yeah, but I'm the authority in the podcast <laughs> listeners' mind. <laughs> Well, God, we are all over this episode. Well, okay. Wait, you did not recognize him at not all? At all? Not at all. Lucas is like not too minor of a minor character. Yeah, I have no idea who it is. You don't re- like? You don't remember how I was hiring a private investigator? No, you know who I remember. The mouse,、Who? Steve McQueen. Oh my God, Steve McQueen! Wasn't Steve a rat? Look, <laughs> I'm not a zoology major. <laughs> yeah, it's a rat. He's a rat. Anyway,、yeah. love him. I, young Charlie does not look like B B J due to. He is Lucas from House MD, but I guess perhaps with the absence of that, I can't believe I watched House call a rat Steve McQueen, and still was like, "Yeah, that's a reference to the Cars movies." <laughs> 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 like, 
<laughs> like I just assumed like I Steve mean, McQueen. He likes Monster Jasper. Trucks. Is the Cars movies really that far from that? Exactly. He loves a Monster Truck show. So, you know. Yeah. I want huh. to fucking tell you about Hannibal. Can I? I'll just do it. Yeah. We've been, we've been recording for so long anyway. Who give a shit? <laughs> Who give a shit? Okay. Tell like, me about Hannibal. Because the, the, the thing is, like, throughout that season, um, Will was playing, was like double, double bluffing or whatever. It's like, he's on the FBI side, but yeah. the way he's doing it is he is befriending Hannibal. Like, mm-hmm. he's doing what Hannibal wants him to do. But then, like, as it goes on further, it becomes blurrier and blurrier which side he's actually betraying. Mm-hmm. And he was supposed to... And then at the end of it, when he realizes that the FBI are probably going to kill Hannibal or whatever, and they're supposed to run away together. So that's the thing. They're supposed to run mm-hmm. away together that night. And then... um. Like, Will was thinking, like, I wouldn't run away or we wouldn't run away together. I'm just gonna let the FBI, like, k- kill him or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he realizes, like, oh, I can't do that. So he calls Will, as he calls Hannibal and goes, run. And uh-huh. the way Hannibal interpreted that was, like, like demeaning. Like, he's, like, taunting him or whatever. Like, mm. he didn't understand that, like, Will wanted to run away with him or wanted oh. to save him or whatever. He uh-huh. thought that Will was um Will betrayed him basically. Mhm. And so like him being like I give you a gift, but you didn't want it. Mm. Will was like no I did though, but you still gutted me and left me on the floor to bleed out. So and also killed our um daughter, adopted daughter. Crazy, crazy show, and like yeah. in next next season, he tells like he tells someone like Will like I wanted to run away with him that night, and in a way I still want to do it, like mm. bro. At this point, but I support <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Hannibal's crazy. It's a crazy show. <laughs> God, we need to watch it together. But I know you don't like. Don't I want to. Well, but we should. But we should. But you well, won't. I, but I maybe, won't. <laughs> maybe like we can do a thing where I watch it and then I tell you about it. Ella, when you told me beat for beat everything that happens in the first um, episode of Interview with the Vampire, and then the rest of the episodes. So yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. 